You know what? In Pittsburgh, it's a Saturday night. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in my life, and I'm feeling great. Let's lay lumber. That was a moment. God, I screwed that. But one thing I have found by walking around and talking to people, because I do look a little different than the last time I showed up here. Don't take it anymore. But what I've noticed about it is people I've known for years don't recognize me anymore, which is great. They're not just ignoring me now because I'm a lousy lady. I'm thinking if I keep going like this, I won't have to worry so much about all those outstanding warrants. <laughs> but people have asked me, okay, why did you do all of this? What inspired it? Did you have a health issue? Did you find religion? Maybe you couldn't fit that tight leather miniskirt anymore. What was your problem with this? Well, there's actually two very big reasons that I took on this challenge to do all this and did contacts and worked on the hair and everything. One is my lifelong dream, my goal, the thing I think I was put on this planet to do, at least I hope, is to make out with a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> and you, at this point in my life, any kind. Because after the last eight years of political office, my finances are just not up to the task of paying anymore. <laughs> and you know what? If it's anything like those stimulus packages, the fix for this might be, folks, I don't know about you, but Dick Cheney with a pair of pom-poms and a set of spankies don't do a thing for me. <laughs> and as far as my other attributes like talent, guys, I stand up here and go dee -dee 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 all day long, so I gotta work on this part. <laughs> but the other reason is, I'm 40 years old, and going to the doctor now is really, really frightening. <laughs> It's not like when I was a child. When you were a child, the object of the doctor seemed to be, let's keep this child as calm as possible so he doesn't piss on our floor. <laughs> so, everything was balloons and lollipops and clouds and Ranger Rick magazines and nice receptionists. And no matter what shape you went to the doctor in, broken limb, covered in snot or blood or what have you, you knew you were going home because, hey, what's wrong with you? A black eye, a bruise, busted lip, upset tummy, sore throat. And if you played your cards right, Diarrhea. you got a lollipop at the end of it because the doctor had to keep his brother-in-law in a gig. <laughs> but when you hit around 40, I don't know why this happened. But it's like doctors suddenly came out of their own little closet and became sadists. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the easy targets you always hear about the stuff like, well, we're going to have to do a biopsy like that, or other scary things that doctors say, like we're going to have to send that to the lab or go to my con. Oh. There's still too many people here. He still can't touch me tonight. But no, some of the language, some of the stuff that was so simple as, look, I scared just as easily right now as I did as a kid. I can make a bigger puddle. But the language to start with, when you go in, I went in once with a black eye. Don't ask me why, I paid for it very well. It's just my lifestyle. But I went in and he said you had a mild hematoma. And I'm like, didn't Spock mind meld with one of these things in an episode of Star Trek? <laughs> Nothing is a simple name anymore. It's all long and scary. I was on a phone call one time with a client. It's a doctor's office. And it's weird because doctor's offices now advertise their services. It's almost better than 900 numbers the details these things go into. But... The doctor actually said, while well, we're going to do this using a minimally invasive procedure. Minimally invasive, like the French might be involved. 